Okay, so we're going to have a look at the limit as n goes to infinity of sine of n, where all of your n's are integers. And this is slightly harder than the continuous problem, where you were just looking at limit as x goes to infinity, so where x is just any old real number of sine of x. So it's slightly easier to show that this limit doesn't exist. And we'll just have a look at the continuous case before we move on to the discrete limit. Because for the continuous case, if we have a look at a graph of sine of x, what we can do is we can construct two sort of simple subsequences. So you could have here your a n is pi over 2 plus, and then this will be 2 pi times n minus 1. This will give you all of these terms here, so pi over 2 and then pi over 2 plus 2 pi and so on. This will give you a nice sequence where sine of all of these is 1. And you could do the same thing and get sine of all of these terms is minus 1. So here your bn, this will be equal to 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi to n minus 1. And sort of the crux of this proof is if you wanted to show that the limit as x goes to infinity, this continuous limit doesn't exist. You just know that you've got two subsequences. So the limit along the first subsequence is sine of a n. This is equal to 1. But then your limit as n goes to infinity of sine of b n. This is equal to minus 1. And if there was a limit, it would have to be equal to 1. But it would also have to be equal to minus 1 if there was a limit as x went to infinity. So clearly this can't be the case, therefore the limit doesn't exist. And we'll try and show something similar for the discrete limit, but this is a little bit more fiddly because you can't just pick any old values you like, like pi over 2 here with the nice values. So how on earth are we going to show that the limit doesn't exist? We need to try and find a nice way of picking some subsequences. And unfortunately the integer values of sine aren't even particularly nice to work out. However, if we have a look at the graph of sine, maybe we can do something that's just about good enough. So maybe you can pick a point up here, and then another point up here, and then continue with some large values, and then you could also pick some small values. So you could say here, perhaps your an, rather than being equal to 1, you could have an, where sine of an, I should say, is greater than or equal to a half, perhaps. And then you could try sine of bn is less than or equal to minus a half. So if we were to try this approach, hopefully we can find enough integers, because there are plenty of integers in each of these regions. So we will deal with this in a sec, but the idea of the proof is we will try and find a suitable subsequence where sine of an is always greater than or equal to a half, and sine of bn is always less than or equal to minus a half. And then once we've got those two subsequences, this is saying the limit, basically as n goes to infinity, would have to be greater than or equal to a half if it existed, but it would also simultaneously have to be less than or equal to minus a half if it existed, so therefore the limit wouldn't exist. So let's have a go in a sec at finding two such subsequences. And now to actually find two such subsequences, so I've just changed the notation here to ak and bk so they're not using the same index, but we're basically looking for sine of ak needs to be greater than or equal to a half, and if we were to look in this interval here between so here we're in the interval between pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, because you know that sine of pi over 6 and sine of 5 pi over 6, both of these give you a half. If you can find an integer in this interval, then sine of that integer will also be, that will have to be greater than or equal to a half. You could do the same thing for the same interval, moved 2 pi units along, and then sort of more generally for our sort of kth one of these intervals, you'll have 2 pi times k minus 1, so we're moving along 2 pi units each time, and then plus your pi over 6, and then we've also got 2 pi k minus 1 added to the 5 pi over 6. So this is your sort of general kth interval. And the same sort of thing happens for your bk's. We can look for in each of these intervals. So your first interval there, you know that sine of 7 pi over 6 gives you minus a half and you know that sine 11 pi over 6 also gives you minus a half. And then if we move this along 2 pi units each time, you'll get 2 pi k minus 1 plus uh, 7 pi over 6. This is your general sort of kth one of these intervals. And we're going to look for integers in each of these intervals. So now how would we actually find 
an integer in each of these intervals? Well, we can have a look how wide are they? Because you notice each of these intervals going from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6 to 11 pi over 6, they're all width 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. And then because we know that pi is greater than 3, this is greater than 2. And actually, all we really care about is this being greater than 1. Because if you've got an interval that's of width greater than 1, Imagine you've got the interval perhaps between 6.8 going all the way up to 7.8. At some point between 6.8 as this number increases up to 7.8, at some point this 6 is going to turn into a 7. And the point at which this happens is exactly the integer 7, just for example. So basically this is explaining why in any interval on the real numbers of width greater than 1, it will contain at least one integer. And we only care about having one integer. So let's just perhaps take the smallest one of each of these. So how am I actually going to define my ak? Well, define ak then as the minimum of this sort of kth interval here. So the minimum of this interval, and we'll intersect this with the integers. So here intersection of this with the integers. And we take the minimum just so that we've got a well-defined way of choosing one. And we do the exact same sort of thing for bk, so now we're doing 2 pi k minus 1, and then plus 7 pi over 6, 2 pi k minus 1, plus 11 pi over 6. And again, just sort of the smallest natural number which is in this interval. So we take our ak's as these and our bk's as these, and this is really nice because we know in this interval sine of ak is always greater than or equal to half, sine of bk is always less than or equal to minus a half. So what are we saying? We're saying that we can say that the limit as k goes to infinity of sine of ak, this has to be greater than or equal to a half, but also the limit as k goes to infinity of sine of bk, this is less than or equal to minus a half if such a limit were to exist. So we're saying that if the limit as n goes to infinity of sine of n, we look at two subsequences here. Along one subsequence, all of your terms are always greater than or equal to a half. And here, all of your terms are less than or equal to minus a half. So if a limit existed, it would have to both be greater than or equal to a half and also less than or equal to minus a half which of course isn't possible. So what we can conclude here then is that the limit as n goes to infinity of sine of n, of course restricting ourselves to integer n, this limit does not exist.